Today in our 2011 GMC Sierra, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Kurt Double Lock Flip and Store Underbed Gooseneck Hitch with Install Kit, part number C607-604. What sets this hitch apart from the rest of them is it's got a double locking pin. Where most of them only have one pin that goes through, this one has two. It's going to keep your load extra secure. A reason you'd want this product is the fact that it only has the four holes that you're going to drill for your safety chain loops and one four inch diameter hole in the bed. Everything else is a bolt on using existing holes. Now your trailer ball is a two and five sixteenths that is chrome plated along with this nice ring around the outside. It's got two spring loaded safety chain holders. All of the hardware is either going to be zinc coated or powder coated with the exception of the ball and the ring around the top. That's going to help protect against rust and corrosion and make it last for a long time. Another nice feature of this hitch is when it's in the stowed position, it comes with a nice rubber cap. It's going to help keep moisture and dirt out of your hitch receiver. And once it's in the stowed position, you have a flat bed surface that you can still use your truck to haul things with. When your hitch is in the stowed position, you can pull out the lever and twist it to the front of the truck. Then you can pull up your ball, flip it around. It's only going to go in one way. There's a groove on the side, and that's going to match up with the passenger side of the vehicle. It'll drop back down, and you'll release your, your handle, and it'll lock into position. Then you take your rubber cap, place it over the top, and then when you want to tow again, simply remove the cap, stow it away, pull out your ball, drop it back down into position, you'll release the latch, and it's tight. So now let's go ahead and show you how to install it. To begin our install, it's going to be necessary to remove the spare tire, which we've already done. We'll just set the cable on top of a frame rail to be out of our way. Now we're going to remove this plastic heat shield that goes around the tire. There's two 13 millimeter bolts. We'll just pull those down. And we'll set this aside for reinstall all at a later time. It's going to be necessary to drop our exhaust, so we're going to take a safety strap and wrap it around the exhaust. Now that we have our safety strap in place, we're going to go ahead and take some lubricant, lube up the grommets that hold the exhaust in place. I'm going to take a pry bar and we'll just pry out, pop the grommets out of the hole, push them aside. Once you have them all loose, you can loosen up your strap and let your exhaust come down. It's going to be necessary on this vehicle to remove the front one too and push it to the side. That way we have enough drop on our exhaust to get in and cut our heat shield. That's going to be necessary to take out the heat shield between the frame rails here. So we're going to go ahead and cut it with a grinder. You can use a tin snip and we're going to remove that one section. And you can trim off the last piece with a tin snip. Now we can go ahead and cut the front side. We can just take that piece out and we're going to dispose of that. Now before we install our two bars up underneath the bed, it's a good idea to take a bolt and run it through all the holes to clean out any excess powder coat that might be built up in there. You just take one of the bolts that goes in there and just run it down through the hole. Now we can put in one of our crossbars. We're going to do the front one first. The front one's going to have a notch on the bottom side of it. It's going to give you some clearance over top of your fuel tank. Now when this goes in, you want to make sure that your bolt holes that are offset are at the bottom side. And you just slide on the frame rail across. We'll take a pair of channel locks and we're going to rotate it into position and stand it up. And we'll do the same thing with the rear one. Now the rear one does not have a notch. Just make sure you have your bolt holes to the bottom side. And 
and we can slide that back. Now we're gonna install our bolts and spacers into the frame rail. You're gonna have one there and one on the other side of the axle. We're gonna use a, a bolt leader to pull them through. Once you get it out the hole, place on your spacer. Need your 5 8 carriage bolt. Feed the spacer in. And your bolt. And pull it into place. Then you want to leave your leader on there until we get the side plate on. And we're going to pull this one into position. That one's going to come in from the back side. We'll install our spacer block and our carriage bolt. Feed them into the hole. Now we'll pull our bolt out. We're going to take our side plate. We're going to slip the wire leader through the holes in the side plate. We'll pull it into position. And we'll remove our leader tape. We'll install our flange nut onto the bolt. And we'll place our back one on. Same process. Now we'll take one of our half inch bolts, block washer, and flat washer. We'll place it into the end here. Take a little maneuver in to get it in the position. And once you have the rear one started, go ahead and do the same thing with the front. And we're gonna run those down finger tight. Might be easy just to take a ratchet and you can do it. Just don't over tighten them, you just wanna snug them down. To pull them into position. We're going to want to repeat this same process on the other side. Once we have both sides installed, we're going to snug up the two outer bolts on both sides so they're against the frame. Then we're going to make sure that we have our two crossbars centered. Now we'll take our supplied template which is going to be marked front. Place that towards the front. Take one of the bolts, the half inch bolts. We're going to install it. Now we're going to tighten this down. It's going to take a little maneuver to get that in because it's going to, it wants to make sure that it's centered up in the middle of your bed. So that's where your pilot hole is going to come through the bed so we can drill our hole on the top side. Now we're going to drill a quarter inch hole through the template straight up into the bed. Now we can go up to the top side and we're going to drill a four inch diameter hole from the top down. Now that we have the hole drilled, we can remove our template and we'll clean up our hole, put a little bit of paint in there. Now we can loosen up the front rail to give us a little access room to slide our plate in from the bottom side. Now we'll take our center section. We're going to place it up in there. An extra set of hands comes in handy. And there's going to be a total of eight bolts we're going to put in. Once you have all your bolts started, we can go ahead and snug them down. Now we can run down the two bolts in the front bar and snug down our back one. And we'll repeat that process for the other side. So first we're going to torque our center section bolts to the torque specified in your instructions. You're going to want to do that for all eight of the bolts. Now we're going to go ahead and torque our side plates to their specified torque, found in your instructions. And we'll repeat that for the two on the other side. And the last to torque are gonna to be your two crossbars. Those are gonna be the same torque as the ones on the center plate. Now we'll repeat that on the other side and that's gonna finish up our torques. Now we're gonna drill the holes for our <clears throat> safety chain loops. We're gonna use the innermost oblong holes 
and it's going to set on the on the lower part of the bed channel and we'll just go ahead and mark some holes once we have a mark we can take a pilot bit and we can run it through and we'll go from the top side and clean out the hole now we'll take a quarter inch bit and we'll run it straight up through Repeat that on the other side. Now that we have our pilot holes through the bed, we're going to enlarge them to a half inch so we can put our safety chain loops down through. You want it to be able to slip up and down easily like that. And we'll do it on the other side. You want to take care on this side, on the driver's side, because the gas, the, the fuel tank is right below here, and you don't want to possibly hit it. And it's not directly below, it's just to the front, but when you're reaming out the hole, you want to be careful you, you're not going to nick it. Once we've cleaned up our area, we're going to take our U-bolts, drop them both down through. And if you're doing this by yourself, just lay a piece of wood or something heavy across the top to help keep them in place while you go to the bottom side to put on the nuts and springs and washers. Now that we've come down to the bottom, we're going to place a flat washer, a spring, another flat washer, and a nylon lock nut. We'll do that on both sides. Now we'll take a three quarter inch wrench and we'll tighten these up until we have about two or three threads sticking through the nylon lock nut. Now we'll take our dual locking pin. It has a hole in one end and a, hole, a cross hole through there. That's going to go to the top. You slide it in. Then we'll take our lever handle from the outside. Slide that in. Place the two flat washers and the spring. And you're going to slide that all the way in. Take your supplied nut and bolt, slide it through, nylon lock nut. Take your 5 16 wrench and just snug this down. It doesn't need a lot of torque, it just needs to be snugged down because it's a really small bolt. And all you're doing is keeping your lever into the pin. Now we can test out our lever to make sure it's working properly. You're just going to pull it out and twist it towards the front of the vehicle and that's going to unlock your pin after you've dropped in your ball, push it to the back, and let it slide in. Now we'll be ready to put our exhaust back up into place. Once you have your strap pulled back up, you can start reattaching your grommets. Now it may require a friend to help you lift up on your exhaust. We're going to use an undercar jack stand and just take the pressure off. Now we can install our heat shield for the tire with our two 13 millimeter bolts. And we can torque that back down to specification. We can remove our safety strap. Now we'll be ready to put our spare tire back into position. And that's going to do it for our look at and install of the Kurt Double Lock Flip and Store Underbed Gooseneck Hitch with Install Kit, part number C607-604 on our 2011 GMC Sierra.